Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And in this one, there was a pretty big update when it comes to healers recently on the Shadowlands beta, which has kind of shooken up the tier lists a little bit here. So my PvP healer tier list needs an update. And if you want to know where your specialization is currently lying or where some of your friends should be looking to pick up a class, then this tier list is looking to try and help you guide uh, those players to that right specialization. Now, Discipline Priest receives some nerfs to its damage output, but uh, simply put, this is a specialization that's going to be pretty tough to nerf down, mostly because its focused will is still 30% damage reduction. So whenever you're attacking a Discipline Priest, they're just taking 30% less damage. That was a massive buff, um, which is shoring up one of their major weaknesses, which was just getting attacked by teams that had Death Knights typically, uh, which is no longer really a problem. Some quality of life changes with abilities coming off global cooldown, and now Powered Shield instantly being applied when you cast Rapture on the target. All of these quality of life improvements and kind of increasing... Uh, their weaknesses, now their strengths, actually, like being tunneled as a Discipline Priest is actually very easy to deal with because you have so many schools of magic. You have a very powerful Covenant ability in the Venthyr with the Mind Games. It's doing a ton of damage. It denies a lot of healing. And in my mind, even though the damage as a Discipline Priest was brought down, uh, in my mind, it's still an S-tier healer. It's got great utility. It's got conduits that are enabling it to spam Purge and Mass Dispel. You really couldn't ask for anything better in a healer at the moment when it comes to PvP. Uh, but because of its um, nerfs, there may be some new candidates as well to compete on the same tier with it, but it's definitely still an S tier healer. Now, Holy Paladin was one that I was on the fence with initially here with the Shadowlands beta, if you've watched my first iteration of this tier list, because Holy Paladin is so powerful with borrowed power from BFA with ineffable truth corruptions and very casted fast heals with infusion of light. Now, in Shadowlands, infusion of light doesn't increase the speed of the Holy Light, it increases the healing of it. So you're very slow casted. You don't have access to this indefinite amount of powerful cooldowns like in Battle for Azeroth. That alone makes it feel really bad in comparison to Battle for Azeroth. But on top of that, its legendaries are just lackluster. In most cases, I'm seeing a lot of players even just pick up Rhett Paladin legendaries to try and get a little bit of extra damage. It's a healer that is, in my mind, certainly struggling, um, which is why it's going to be actually ranked a little bit lower than I initially had given it a ranking. I would put it on a C tier at the moment. Uh, it's definitely nowhere near as close to it as, a, as good as as it is in Battle for Azeroth at the moment, um, with having lost again all that borrowed power. Holy Priest, on the other hand, is one that's looking a little bit more promising, but not by much. Um, if anything, if you're a Holy Paladin, this is probably drawing concern to you as a Holy Paladin more than anything when I'm going to be giving it uh, my final assessment. But Holy Priest is obviously receiving a ton of interesting new honor talents, to put it. Uh, fun new honor talents, like flying up into the air or having the Prayer of Mending healing boosted up a lot. Their major drawback is that their healing output is just kind of lackluster. They have to spam hard cast. Their greater heal was put on a cooldown, which was kind of a, a more or less a cheesy mechanic that enabled Holy Priest to at least be competitive, but not necessarily in a way that was super fun for anyone involved, especially facing uh, that type of healing. But that type of healing now is removed, so it's relying a lot more on its base kit, which isn't super great. However, in my mind, its strengths and its weaknesses fall almost directly in line with Holy Paladin. Um, and which is why I'm actually increasing it up from D to C. It's still definitely on the bottom end, maybe a specialization that you may want to avoid unless there's some changes made to it specifically in PvP. It's also the Mind Games Covenant doesn't synergize as well as with, with Discipline because of Atonement healing. A lot of the Covenants are just kind of not great for Holy Priest. Um, I'm leaning maybe towards a Night Fae one for cooldown reduction and trying to get its cooldowns rotated back up and maybe healing through that as a method. I would say Holy Priest is looking a little bit more promising than I first assessed, though, um, but it's still on the bottom end here. Now, Mistweaver Monk is a healer that I put on A tier initially. It's still just basically Battle for Azeroth Mistweaver, which is a really powerful throughput healer sit in the back and heal the main reason that i think mistweaver will still end up being competitive is because it's kind of the counter to damage over time effects um, with counteract magic and with the strength of shadow priest right now and the likelihood of it being a shadow priest meta at the start of shadowlands mistweaver could exist in a powerful powerful position just as a counter the downsides of mistweaver is surviving high mobility melee 
something like a subtlety rogue that can lock you down in stuns. Now, obviously, having lost Conflict and Strife, an essence from Battle for Azeroth, having lost a ton of versatility, dying in stuns is going to be a big problem for Mistweaver monks. And with the prevalence of subtlety rogues, I see that holding it back. Um, its lack of offense is definitely not allowing it to enter the S tier. If it had good offense, it would, but Way of the Crane has now been baked into a normal talent, doubled the cooldown, and it's not nearly as effective, especially in PvP. It's seen a bit of play in Mythic Plus, but in PvP, it's not as good as the Legion Way of the Crane was. Um, this new Chi G version is just not, not up to par with it. The Eminence Legendaries aren't seeing a lot of play. Basically, this is just a powerhouse standstill turret healer which is why I would still keep it on the A tier, but it's not enough to push it up into the S tier. Resto Druid, on the other hand, was a healer that was almost directly competing with Discipline, but Discipline was just so far over the top that you really couldn't put anything on the same tier. I think running Necrolord in PvP with the Adaptive Swarm to increase your healing over time effects and extending them with Legendaries is going to allow Resto Druids to have a really good position at the start of Shadowlands. It's a healer that's just all around good. You can do turret healing like a Mistweaver in the back line. You can run Feral Affinity with Heart of the Wild to get up in the face of your opponents. You can utilize Cyclone both aggressively and defensively. Your Honor Talents have opened up a lot now with Overgrowth going into Talents and Cyclone becoming Baseline, so getting access to things like Deep roots so that your entangling roots now no longer break to damage means that i think you're going to synergize heavily in these caster comps with shadow priests and affliction warlocks where you can root targets that are fully dotted and if they heal the enemy healer dispels it they're dispelling unstable affliction and they take a huge hit so a deep roots resto druid play style mixing in all this cat form damage i'm expecting it to be a really awesome experience it's obviously very powerful and now with the downgrade of disciplined priest in my mind resto druid is jumping up as an s tier healer to me and the last healer here which has had a bit of controversy around it similarly to the holy paladin i wasn't sure about where it would fit because it was losing all of its powerful borrowed power like pack spirit and ghost wolf healing but in a recent build it's gained a lot of instant cast healing through riptide it is a very powerful legendary chest piece which allows earth shield to basically almost prevent you to never die it's really good it's so good it's probably the best legendary for all shaman specs um but definitely for restoration shaman running the necro lord to get extra riptides or even potentially going venthyr for interrupt reductions and big chain harvest heals uh, it's a specialization that is doing really well actually now I, i'm a bit hesitant to put it into the s tier because i still want more time with it it's a healer that i could definitely see being s tier so if in a way i guess we should actually put mistweaver down on b and then we'll put Resto Shaman on A, although I'm thinking of it more as like an A and an A plus, but I wouldn't I wouldn't feel comfortable putting Mistweaver on the same tier as Restoration Shaman. And again, this isn't because Mistweaver is monstrously worse off than Resto Shaman. It's just that I Resto Shaman offers more aggressively to the table. And I anticipate that with the the power of priests and druids, it's gonna be important to have purge. Uh, to remove heal over time effects, to remove power word shields. So having a shaman who synergizes heavily with something like a shadow priest and they bring purges together could actually be a counter to what I'm anticipating to be um, discipline priest and resto druids to dominate. And if that's the case, maybe then resto shaman actually snags the S tier spot. But this is a healer that's looking really good now after the recent changes. And I just wanted to highlight that here in this tier list update. So I hope that you enjoyed this update for Shadowlands PvP. I'm going to be constantly uploading content if you're interested in reviews, if you're interested in tier lists, if you're interested in anything to do with Shadowlands. I'm working my hardest to upload every single day to provide you with accurate information so we can all make the correct decision when it comes to our gameplay. Of course, my main focus being fun and kind of engagement so being able to play a specialization for a long time without getting bored uh, as shadowlands is going to be a pretty big investment in terms of your character you want to make sure you're investing that time into something down the road where you're like oh i'm bored of this so i'm always keeping that as the forefront and then i'm taking performance into consideration when i think that something is performing so horribly that you may not have a great time with it and you may not be able to find groups with it. I take that into consideration and I highlight that as well. So if this information was useful to you, please leave a like on the video, comment down below and subscribe. If you would like to check out any of my other content on YouTube here, like my recommend, rec recommended class list, I will have it linked up above here or some of my other tier lists or my reviews. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next one.